One sunny afternoon, Nikola Tesla was in his Houston Street laboratory in Manhattan. He was experimenting with oscillators, which are electronic devices used to emit sound waves and even vibrations. He attached the little device to a support beam in his lab that ran the length of the building. He switched it on and started to gradually adjust the frequency it was emitting until, bingo, the beam started to vibrate. He had found the resonant frequency of the column. The test was proving to be a success. He started to feel a vibration in the floor as the sound wave traveled down the length of the beam and spread under his feet. He increased the intensity on the knob. It was just a quiver, but his downstairs neighbor began to notice his ceiling shaking. The other neighbors thought it was a heavy truck banging down the street, but the shaking persisted and grew stronger and stronger. Now the vibration spread across the entire floor of the laboratory and into the neighboring buildings. Some of the locals in Little Italy and Chinatown began spilling onto the streets, thinking an earthquake was happening. The trembling was incessant and horrific, causing windows to shatter, pipes to stretch. The local police on Mulberry Street, they felt it too. An earthquake in New York City? Impossible. The police station was right around the corner from Tesla's lab, and they were all too familiar with the strange lights and sounds which would happen throughout the day and night from that building. As the ground shook, furniture was moving, pipes were breaking, and, and the officers thought the police headquarters was about to collapse. Two police rushed out the door toward Tessa's lab. They reached his building. The vibrations felt even stronger there. They ran up the stairwell, facing the fear that the building might collapse on them. As they burst through the door to Tesla's lab, they were met with a bizarre sight. Tesla, swinging a heavy sledgehammer at one of the iron beams, he smashed the little device off and the vibrations instantly stopped. No more earthquake. Tesla was surprised to see the two uniformed police officers just staring at him in shock. He approached them with the sledgehammer still in his hands and said, Gentlemen, I'm sorry, but you are just a trifle too late to witness my experiment. I found it necessary to stop it suddenly and unexpectedly in an unusual manner, just as you entered. If you will come around this evening, I will have another oscillator attached to this platform, and each of you can stand on it. You will, I am sure. Find it a most interesting and pleasurable experience. Now, you must leave, for I have many things to do. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Apparently, Tesla was completely oblivious to the near destruction he had caused in the neighboring buildings and the neighborhood. The police were, I'm sure, as dumbfounded as the rest of the neighborhood. Everyone at that time knew who Tesla was. He was routinely in the New York papers. You can actually look up the digitized papers from early 1900s New York City and find dozens and dozens of newspaper articles interviewing Tesla about lightning or electricity or reporting on his new experiments. He was an odd but welcome fixture of the modern industrial age. This was a clip from my podcast, Creative Codex, where we explore the story of creativity as it's told through the lives of history's great creative geniuses. If you'd like to listen to the full episode, just follow the link in the video description or head on over to your favorite podcast player and search Creative Codex. That's C-O-D-E-X. On the show, we cover such incredible figures as Leonardo da Vinci, Frida Kahlo, Nikola Tesla, Salvador Dali, Robert Johnson, Dr. Carl Jung, Emily Dickinson, and many, many more. If you enjoyed this clip, then I can guarantee you'll love it. This is MJ Dorian signing off. I'll see you there.